the world at the moment, 2014, uh, the year that's just gone by, had seen a lot of distortion. There's been a lot of movement. It's just like the tectonic plates of the continental shift of years gone by. Slow movements, glacial movements. Slowly we're seeing the demise of mainstream media. Obviously, as I'm doing right here, online podcasting is assisting this. More information is available to us now than ever. And the internet, for instance, is it's like the Library of Alexandria. The Library of Alexandria was a destination where people would travel months on end by boat just to get there. Some would actually risk their lives to get there. Why? For knowledge. And now that we have the internet, well, it's at your fingertips. So if people aren't able to get away from celebrity rubbish and uh, and be concerned and be concerned with stuff that really doesn't involve the average day. I'm an average day person, okay? But I have a desire for knowledge. Always have. Therefore, the internet for me has been a godsend, as it most likely has for all of you people out there listening to this. So to use it only for being able to catch up with friends and so forth, okay, that's fine, you know, there's no issue there. But it must be utilised for a purpose which is probably, has more essence than anything and that's being able to increase your level of understanding. There's a lot of talk out there that, you know, we're 3D entities and 4D and 5D and animals are 2D and so forth. But um, I guess in a universal spectrum, the beauty of being human is the fact that we have the capability of feeling all emotions, the whole broad spectrum of emotion. And not only that, but also the fact that we are have a limited lifespan, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, throughout the universe there's probably entities that live much longer than we do. But then again, understand that uh, we are a soul with a body attached. Meat, meat, meat puppet, um, space suit, I like to call the body. And we're here to have an experience. And the experience is beautiful. It really is. It really is. We, we get to, um, as an individual, give birth to a child. Um, we get to show love, compassion. But one thing that occurs a lot, and, um, you know, like the, the, the powers to be, you know, those individuals, people call Illuminati the elite, whatever. But um, as far as I'm concerned, they're just a couple of people who probably 150, 200 years ago, maybe further than that, um, some will say even the Babylonian times when money was integrated into the system, um, realised that they had a, a power which was, you know, omnipresent compared to everybody else because they could filter money into the system. And that's fine. And so as far back as Babylonians and then through the Roman time, through through the, all, all, all the ancient history where coinage, you know, Coins were actually stamped and used as a as a currency, um, but uh, those individuals they they were attracted. You know, a lot of people talk about left and right hemisphere. They were attracted to the left hemisphere survival. Okay, fear, fear. It's all about uh, making sure that you have while you're on this planet. And um, you know. Like I go, I go out into nature, and I see how the animals seem to always have enough. You know, 
Of course, there's instances of drought, and this is where uh, where us as a species, as an intelligent species, have been able to be able to hoard wheat, for instance. You know, ever since the probably the Egyptian times. You know, um, and allowing us to have to 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 see the time through a drought. Okay, that's fine. I understand that, and um, this is good. We so we're a conscious being. Okay, well let's utilize it. You know, let's go to the next level. And like I said, the internet is is a thousand times better than the Library of Alexandria. You know, or some people, as they've stated, you know, the Vatican has got um, one of the best libraries on the planet, which is uh, sad that. You know, that's probably not out there for the masses to access. Um, but the internet does a pretty good job. Okay. And um, it's time that we, as a species, um, do the right thing for all other species on the planet, which is another point I wanted to bring up too. You know, uh, you've got people who seem to love going out hunting. And killing for sport. Um, you know, for me, in the society that we live in right now, especially those from developed countries, if there's no necessity to kill, why do you do it? You know, why, why, why would an individual that's trying to achieve a higher conscious state go out and kill an animal in its natural state? And many will say that. That's our nat that's our nature too, but people are killing animals like lions, bears, uh, giraffes, rhinoceroses for sport. You know, you know what I've got to say to people like that. You're sad. You've missed it. You've missed it. And if you sit there and justify what you do as a sport because there's a tag system and so forth, and so many, you know, because there's an overabundance. Really? There's an overabundance? Compared to what? You know, 200 years ago, 500 years ago? What are you talking about? You know, if you're, gonna, if you're trying to justify the killing of animals, especially when it comes to sport, well, you know, for me, you're just a moron. You're a moron. And it's very disappointing. But... Um, in 2015, that individuals exist that can't wait to... You know, you've fallen for the whole thing. Like they're trying to sell arms to you, guns, bullets. You know, it's a whole, it's a whole industry, okay? And, um, you know, you really want to even up the ledger? You know, go, go, go to Alaska or northern part of America and go and hunt, or Canada, and go and hunt bears with your hands, you know? Because as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's levelling out the playing field, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm big on uh, animal, animal rights because it does, it does ensure, it ensued into the, the, the high consciousness, the awareness thing. If you're killing animals for sport, um, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. But um, here we are, you know, um, third rock from the sun, planet Earth, hurtling through space at over 600 kilometres an hour. And uh, we have achieved a lot. We have achieved a lot in our existence. Excuse me. And um, you know, the space race of the of the 60s was an, an amazing era in our history. Uh, we achieved a lot. There's technology that was carrying on from even then. Of course, yes, you know, there's people out there who will say that um, we didn't land on the moon, well, the Americans didn't land on the moon and so forth. I'm pretty sure by later on they did, but irrespective, I've, I've seen some, a few interviews where, uh, Neil Armstrong stated we left a actual camera behind, and um, if anybody was to go there, i.e., maybe the uh, Chinese, they will find that camera and try to put that standing there, still in the same spot. 
and um, they will probably most likely find a lot of evidence there proving that uh, Americans went to the moon. Um, but we've done well. We well, we were doing really well in that aspect, and 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 yes, it is great. You know, looking looking into the universe and trying to go into into space and maybe trying to land on Mars. Other people say we're already on Mars. Okay, you know. Um, I just I got an issue with that in the sense where I'd like to have a little bit more proof. You know, at least in on the moon they left a a reflector which if you beam a laser towards it it will retract back you know that's sort of like proof that we were there yeah i'm not saying neil armstrong buzz Aldrin and that crew were were the first but hey you know who's to know 100 percent? i haven't been there this is the thing you see with information um if you haven't been or haven't seen with your own eyes you don't know 100 percent. do you verify other people's Witness uh, other people's have been a witness to the fact. Okay, maybe you do. Anyway, my point is this. My point is that um, we've been proven in the we've proven in the past that we as a species can achieve a lot, a lot, a lot. When the chips are down, we can really join together, unite, and achieve some magnificent things. Magnificent things. Um, this time of year, uh, which is not normal because monsoon season seems to have normally have, have, uh, have passed by now, but, you know, you've got countries, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, that, that, uh, that, that cop a lot of flooding. And it just, it just annoys me to no end that, that these people, these so-called philanthropists with billions of dollars, haven't actually handed a billion dollars and, and made these countries floodproof, you know? You're going to save probably 10,000 lives a year, if not more. So in 10 years' time, if you'd saved 100, 150,000 lives, isn't that a beautiful thing? Yet no, no, they'd rather accumulate their money and put it back into hedge funds and... Keep rolling that dice, you know. Wall Street over there, you know. It seems like it's a casino where everybody's an addict and um, all the gamblers are just being given money by the house. Keep circulating the money. Yeah, that's 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 another topic, mind you, about the uh, quantitative easing that's occurred around the world, but in in particular America through the Fed. And um, just so you know, people, they're going to keep pumping money into the system. They don't care. They know that everybody believes that it's a Ponzi scheme and um, they're going to keep pumping money into the system. They're going to keep doing it. They're going to keep doing it until, I don't know, maybe they're preparing for war or something like that. Some currency around the world will have to dive. Some currency that's pretty important will have to crash. and and But there'll have to be a shock. Maybe it's a currency. There'll be a shock. There'll be a shock in the system has to be a major shock to bring down the system, in particular the Dow Jones, you know, in America. But as far as I'm concerned, and I do know, and this is what a lot of people, economists, you know, a lot of individuals out there who discuss the economy and been saying for the last 10 years that it should have fallen over already. And yes, of course it should have. But no, you've got to understand. They're playing a game. They don't care. They're just going to keep pumping money and they're going to bail out the banks. They're going to bail out germs. They're going to bail out the Fords. They're going to bail out whoever needs bailing out because they're one big little group. They're one little clique. They see each other at the restaurants. They see each other at the parties. Their kids play together. You know, that's how it is. That's how it is. And they're going to keep playing this game. Of course, of course, there's people who are suffering down the line. 100%. And this is why we do these podcasts, you know, because those people need a voice. And um, people are too busy with children, wives, husbands, taking their kids to school. Just the cost of bringing up a family, you know. So I don't knock those people because most of them 
probably got married at a young age when they didn't know any better, you know. They didn't know. They just thought, well, this is what you do, you know. And, and their parents were happy that they all got married and so forth. But once you have a family, it's, it's a big responsibility, you know. So I don't knock those people. Um, I'm I'm here for them. I'm going to give a voice. I'm going to I'm I'm going to I'm going to apply a voice for them so they can be heard because I know they're busy. They're working. They're paying bills. They're trying to keep a house, a shelter, a roof over their their children while they sleep at night. Food on their table, and uh, and these people, these these Illuminati, these elite, these. These, these savages, these greedy individuals, they're just hogging all the money. You know, everybody's heard. 85 people own as much as 3.5 billion of the poorest people on the planet. And, and the sad thing is that figure is going to go, you know, less. Like, well, eventually it'll get to the stage where there'll be 10 that own as much as 5 billion on the planet. So how far is this going to go before we finally decide that enough's enough? You know, look, I'm seeing changes. I'm seeing changes. I, I believe 2015 is going to be a a time where we're going to see the fading of mainstream media. It, it's it's apparent. You 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 watch mainstream media every once in a while. Well, hardly ever get to it, but yeah. And um, you notice they actually will show YouTube clips or or stuff that's on the internet, you know, and talk about it. Why? Because it's showing you. It's a changing of the guard, you know. So be strong. Be strong. Be strong, people out there. You know who you are, right? And um, and, and it's going to be glacial, okay? The movements are very slow. But it's, it's happening. It's happening. It is, you know. It's happening. We saw the, the, the police brutality that's um, finally gotten enough airtime in America. It's going on for years. It's happening. Yeah, it's just that, thank God, now with, with uh, social media and so forth, it's, um, they've got in people's faces. And it's good that people are actually rising up and saying, no more, okay? Because after having thought about it intensely, and yeah, there's a lot of people that go out there and say it's about racism. There is an element of that, of course. But um, mainly it's just the fact that the people in power are using the police to scare the masses and divide them and to keep them fearful because they're fearful themselves. That's right. <coughs> Excuse me. The elite are fearful themselves and that's who the police are. The police serve, to serve as their hide thugs. And um, that's why they've been given cop blanche to pretty much do as they please. And yes, they dropped the IQ scores for entry level into the police force. And they, they literally, you know, try to, try to encourage thugs to join. Because that's, that's how it is, you know. And then these police officers out there, if you're listening... Do yourself a favour, you know. Um, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Be compassionate. You know, think twice before you do certain things. Because these people out there, it's not that they're paying your wages and so forth. We all know that. But you're there to serve and protect. Serve and protect too. It's just a small amount of people. No, you need to serve and protect everybody. You know, have some love. Show some, show some heart. Show some heart out there, you know. Look, I'm not against police officers because just like a lot of politicians, they probably get into it for the right reasons, you know. But the system itself it needs changing, you know. So if you're a police officer and um, or an individual who wants to join the police force, you know, which is something I don't really promote. But if you do, try to be nice, you know, because those people out there, somebody's brother, somebody's mother, somebody's sister, you know, we're all the same, one and the same. Don't, don't, be, don't fall for this, oh, you've got to kill them all and, 
and they're from that area and hone into these areas. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know? Just don't do that. You're going to gain more respect by helping people out. You know, you see a guy in a situation or a girl in a situation where um, due to socio socioeconomic uh, demographic background that they're, they're in a situation where they're going to be, it's going to be violent. It's going to be, um, there's going to be, there's going to be uh, distortion in, in, in the field. Well, well, you know, back off a little bit. You know, be nice. Be nice. Anyway, that's it for me.